Let's say that in a class, we have a boy who got 9 marks in mathematics and 18 marks in science. And so if we want to compare the marks that he scored in the two subjects, how would we go about it? Now, one way of doing that would be by subtracting the two scores, right? The score in science is 18, while that in math is 9. We get the difference as 18 minus 9, which is again equal to 9. And therefore, we can say that the boy has scored 9 marks more in science as compared to math. Another way of comparison is to figure out how many times more are the science marks as compared to the math marks. Sounds confusing? Don't worry, you'll understand it better in a minute. What we do here is we find the ratio of the math marks and the science marks, which would be 9 by 18. If I reduce this fraction to its lowest form, it comes out to be 1 by 2. So we have math marks upon science marks is equal to 1 by 2. Taking the denominator from the left hand side to the right hand side, we get math marks is equal to 1 by 2 into science marks. And so we say that math marks are equal to 1 by 2 of science marks or math marks are half of science marks. Next, let's say the marks obtained in math are 12 out of a total marks 20 and the ones obtained in science are 15 out of a total marks of 25. So, can we compare math and science marks just by looking at the marks obtained? No, because in this case, the total marks are not equal for both the subjects. And this means that the denominators are different. And so we cannot compare the two scores simply by looking at the marks obtained. Now, if we look at the marks, we can say the scores in math are 12 upon 20 and those in science are 15 upon 25. These are two fractions that we have here, right? So to compare them, we will make the denominators equal and then compare the numerators to find out which one is greater. But how will we make the denominators equal? Simple, we'll find out the LCM or the lowest common multiple of the two denominators. Here the denominators are 20 and 25 and we know that their LCM is 100. And so, we'll try to make the denominator equal to 100. Now to do that, consider the first fraction. We have the scores in math as 12 by 20. Here, to get the denominator as 100, we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5. So we get the fraction as 12 into 5 upon 20 into 5, which is equal to 60 upon 100. Similarly, for the second set of marks that are 15 upon 25, we will have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4 and we get the fraction as 15 into 4 upon 25 into 4 which is equal to 60 upon 100. Now this means that on a scale of 100, he acquired 60 marks in math and 60 marks in science. Now clearly, we can see that he has acquired equal marks in both subjects. And this brings me to the concept of percentages. Here, when we say 60 upon 100, it means 60 per 100 and that is what is meant by 60%. Here the word cent means 100. So whenever we represent something on a scale of 100, we represent it as percent or percentage, which is denoted by this sign. I'm sure we are already familiar with this sign, aren't we? In fact, we have seen this sign being used to represent percentages in our everyday lives. Even when we are using a mobile phone, whenever the battery goes below 10%, we know that it is low and we have to charge our phones. And at the same time, the moment it flashes 100%, we understand that the battery is fully charged and it is now time to unplug the charger. So you see how calculating the percentage when we are given the quantities to compare is also one method of comparison. And this is usually when the given quantities are ratios or fractions. That is because we know that every ratio or fraction can be converted to percentage, right? Let's say we have to convert 3 by 7 into percentage. Now to do that, we'll simply multiply the numerator and the denominator by 100. 
here we will keep 100 in the denominator as it is, but in the numerator we have 3 into 100 which is equal to 300. And if we divide 300 by 7 that is in the denominator, we get it as 42.85. Now the fraction that we have is 42.85 upon 100 which translates to 42.85 percent. And therefore, we can say that 3 upon 7 is equal to 42.85%. Now, before we move on to an example, let me explain the significance of percentage to you. Whenever we say x percent of something, it means that if we were to divide that something into 100 parts, then we would have x parts of it. For example, if I say that I eat 30% of an apple and then give the rest to my sister, then its physical meaning is that if I divide the apple into 100 equal parts, then I have eaten 30 out of these parts and given the rest to my sister. Now, what would be the rest of the apple? Simple, if I eat 30 out of 100 parts, then the remaining parts would be 100 minus 30, which is equal to 70. And therefore, I give 70 out of 100 parts to my sister and that simply means that my sister ate 70% of the apple. Is that clear? Great. Having understood that, let's now solve a problem. So the question says that 72% of a 64 GB memory card is full. We have to find out how much memory is still available in terms of GB. Now, the memory used is 72% of 64 GB, which means that if we divide 64 GB into 100 parts, then we have used 72 parts already. So, to find out how much this is in terms of GB, we simply find 72% of 64 GB, that is 72 upon 100 into 64. Here, 72 into 64 is 4608 and that upon 100 is equal to 46.08. So, we get the used memory as 46.08 GB. And therefore, the available memory is 64 minus 46.08, which is equal to 17.92 GB. And with that, we come to an end of the problem. In fact, we have also come to an end of this session. But, Stay tuned because in the next session, we will dive deeper into the concept of percentages and see where else they are used in our everyday lives. Until then, bye bye. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.